Hello, welcome to this OCR Further Maths Statistics video, the third in the series looking at chi-squared tests and contingency tables. This video is building on the work done in the previous videos in the series, so if you haven't watched at least the previous one, you may want to do that before watching this one. You will remember that our null hypothesis is that there is no association between hair and eye colour using the contingency table that we started off with, and our alternative hypothesis is that there is some association between hair colour and eye colour. As usual, we've chosen our significance level before carrying out the test. We're going to be using those tables of observed and expected values that we found in the previous video to do this. You will recall from video 2 that we had our observed frequencies of 131 people with their hair and eye colour and we also worked out the frequencies we would expect to have if hair and eye colour were completely independent. What we do now is for each cell in the table we calculate a measure of how far away the observed value is from the expected value. As is common we square the difference to give a positive number which also gives more significance to values which are a long way apart and then we divide by the expected value so that we are looking at this difference as a proportion of the size of the cell. A large difference on a small expected value is more significant than a large difference on a large expected value. And then we add up all these calculations to give our test statistic x squared. Note that the formula for this test statistic is provided for you in the exam. So, let's start calculating the contributions for each cell. For black hair and blue eyes, we've got 7 minus 8.85 all squared divided by 8.85 which is 0 0.387 to three decimal places. Now pause the video while you work out a few cells for yourself. There's no need to complete the whole table. In the exam you will only ever be asked to calculate a few cells. Okay. For blonde hair and blue eyes, you should have got 12 minus 6.72 all squared divided by 6.72 and that is 4.149 to three decimal places. The rest of the values are given here, so pause the video and check the ones that you did. Now we add up all of the values in this table to get our test statistic x squared which is 19.72 to two decimal places. Your test statistic should be given to two decimal places to match the tables. So now we have our test statistic how do we have a sense of whether this is an unexpectedly large value or not? To do this, we're going to use a new distribution to you, the chi-squared distribution. This is a continuous distribution used for tests of association on contingency tables, and it has just one parameter, new. Basically, it's a family of curves, and we need to use the one that corresponds to the size and shape of our table. The parameter is the number of degrees of freedom of the distribution in this situation. Let's see what this means. It's the number of variables that have the freedom to vary. If you look at our expected values, you can see that we can work out the third row from the column totals. If the column totals are fixed, the third row is not free. Similarly, we can work out the final column from the row totals. Again, it isn't free. So the number of free variables is two rows of four, which is eight. 
In general, for a contingency table, the bottom row and final column are dependent on the totals. So the number of degrees of freedom is what you have left. One less than the number of rows multiplied by one less than the number of columns. Now we can look up the correct curve from the family in the formula book. The number of degrees of freedom, in other words the correct curve to use, is listed in the left hand column. We want nu equals 8. We want to see if x squared is too large at the 5% level. So we want to know what value of x squared is exceeded 5% of the time. Looking at the sketch at the top, we can see that we want p equals 0.95 and reading off the critical value we get 15.51. So now we have our critical value we can compare it with our test statistic. x squared is bigger than the critical value so to the right of the shaded area. It's in that 5% area, quite unlikely to happen by chance. We're going to reject the null hypothesis. And we write our conclusion carefully in context, in the usual way. There is evidence at the 5% level of significance to suggest that there is an association between eye colour and hair colour. Here's a summary of the steps we've taken in these three videos to do a chi-squared test. It's quite a long process, but remember that you will not be asked to do a full calculation in the exam. That's the end of this video on carrying out a chi-squared test for a contingency table. In the next video, we'll look at Yates' correction, which adapts the method for very small contingency tables.